Well, good afternoon, everybody. This is Dave Jones with Storm Center Communications and Geo Collaborate. It's Friday, October 18th, and this is a quick tropical update uh, here around 1230 East Coast time. Uh, we do have two areas we continue to watch, one of them now showing a little bit more promise in development uh, than the other. Uh, you can see on the GO satellite picture uh, that's happening right now, uh, I've also added the sea surface temperatures, gotten a lot of good feedback that uh, you really like seeing uh, these systems moving over the warm waters. Uh, gives a good opportunity to see just how warm the waters are. Uh, this is 94L. That's what we've been watching over the last several days, even when it was in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, uh, drifting westward. Still not getting a ton of support from the atmosphere. It's getting a lot of support from the ocean and ocean heat content, uh, but it is just not uh, developing into anything. Uh, it does have some heavy showers and thunderstorms north of Puerto Rico, well offshore. Uh, and uh, it looks like it's going to be encountering some of this wind shear. You see this? There's a storm. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. Uh, spinning off the uh, Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey coast, way offshore over the Gulf Stream. And you can see the frontal system that's hanging down here. That's a lot of wind shear going on. It's it's a big block. It's not going to let any sort of tropical system through. It's just going to tear it apart uh, as it gets closer there. And that's essentially the forecast for 94L, uh, that it's going to move over north of Hispaniola uh, and just kind of peter out, just going to die. We'll be watching it to make sure it does that, and we'll be informing anybody if it decides to do otherwise. Now, here's a new one. Uh, this is not new over the last couple of days. We've obviously been talking about it, uh, but this one has its own um, number now. This is now uh, 95L or AL95. We're watching it in the Western Caribbean. Broad area of low pressure, but it is showing some more organization uh, to it. And that's why the National Hurricane Center has given it a 50% chance now of developing into a tropical cyclone. Now, that means a tropical depression, a tropical storm, or a hurricane. Uh, but you can see there's a lot of convection. We call that uh, thunderstorm activity uh, in, um, in, the, in the Western Caribbean. And it looks like it's moving generally in the westerly direction. I'll show you Geo Collaborate here as we just talk about this. And I'll show this full screen, first of all, so you can see uh, there is uh, AL94, and here is AL95. And you can see some sort of uh, counterclockwise rotation. It's just a broad area of low pressure. But it's expected to move into this area, uh, and that does mean that we'll be seeing um, perhaps impacts in like Belize, uh, Guatemala, uh, down towards Honduras and El Salvador. Uh, so that could be some flooding rains uh, that move in. Also in um, Yucatan, the northern Yucatan Peninsula, uh, Quintana Roo, uh, where Cancun is. Cancun is right up here. So look for some storminess moving into that area and then moving through Mexico, southern Mexico, into the Pacific Ocean. Now, Here's the interesting thing that the National Hurricane Center is looking at. This is GeoCollaborate, and we have the latest uh, outlook from the National Hurricane Center highlighted. You can see 94L right here, or AL94, expected to dissipate in this area over the next several days. Uh, this is 95L, and this is the one that has a 50% chance of forming over the next two days and the next seven days. So this could develop into a tropical cyclone in the next couple of days. Water temperatures, they're plenty warm. We don't have to worry about that. That one ingredient is definitely there. And it looks like we're seeing an easing of the shear environment uh, because if we go back to the satellite picture again, uh, you can see what's going on here. Here's that frontal system, uh, but it looks like some of the winds now moving this way. Some are almost like a cull here where uh, the winds go to nearly zero, but the shear really picks up this in this area here. So that's going to take care of, of this particular system over the next couple of days, uh, 94L. But over here, it looks like the shear is diminishing. So we might have actually some development. That's why the National Hurricane Center has increased it to 50%. But here's the thing I want to show you. And I'll move over here and GeoCollaborate slide it over. This is 95L expected to move here, but the circulation is expected to continue 
to move into the Pacific Ocean. And this is an area that the Hurricane Center in the Eastern Pacific is saying this could develop into a tropical cyclone. Now, if this is named, if this becomes Nadine, which is the next name in the list for the Atlantic Basin, and it crosses over and maintains its circulation, and it gets, uh, it becomes a tropical cyclone or a tropical storm or hurricane in the Pacific, it'll keep the same name. It'll be Nadine over in the Pacific. We've had examples of that happening before. And just a little little trivia for you. If, it, uh, if it's named in the Atlantic and crosses over into the Pacific, it keeps the same name. It doesn't, doesn't change its name at all. So uh, it doesn't look like the good news, uh, no threats to the United States from these tropical systems. Uh, the folks in Florida and all up and down the East Coast can uh, breathe a sigh of relief at least for future threats, while all of the recovery and response continues to happen uh, from Hurricane Helene throughout Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, uh, North Carolina up here, and particularly in the mountains of Western North Carolina. They are continuing to recover. It's going to take months and months to rebuild some of those roads. Now, what I'd also like to show you is a system, and I'll take you back to uh, the satellite image uh, go to full screen here with the goes east satellite and the sea surface temperatures look at this system that's uh, really wrapping up we've talked about this the last couple of days it's not a tropical system it's a extra tropical uh, synoptic scale weather system which means it's larger scale but look it has uh, almost like an, an eye to it um, and you can see it spinning around here some of the satellite imagery is uh, I can hit the reload on that and let this uh, load back up. But you can see the warm Gulf Stream. This is the warm Gulf Stream. And this system is really wrapping up over those warmer waters. You have quite a thermocline here, a change in temperature in the ocean. You can see where it goes from really warm to quite cool. And uh, low pressure systems love that temperature difference so they can uh, wrap up. But notice where it's moving. It's drifting to the southeast because high pressure is pushing that low out of the way. And it's basically going to engulf it and squeeze it out and say, thanks for visiting, but you're not welcome. But you can see this going on here. And I just want to go over to GeoCollaborate for a second because uh, I'm going to turn on the satellite picture. So we see where this low is in the uh, GOES imagery. I'll go over to GeoCollaborate full screen so you can see the Maryland, New Jersey coastline here. And I'm going to turn on a satellite picture. I'm going to turn on the GOES satellite image of the full disk, true color, and there it is. This is being pulled. This is what GeoCollaborate does. It pulls trusted data sources in real time from those sources pulls them together into a collaborative environment where we can share this information very quickly. Now we see this low pressure system out here. And what I'd like to do is turn on the ocean observing systems. Remember, we talked about that before. Those global drifters that are out there, look at that. We have buoys primarily uh, for NOAA research uh, that can help transition this data into operations. But this is basically research buoys. And uh, I'll zoom in here just, well, I don't need to zoom in. Let's click on these just to see what the wave heights are around this low pressure system out there. So this one I'm going to click on. Look at that. Wave height almost 15 feet. 15 foot waves near the center of this low pressure system. If we move out a little bit further, look at that. 16 and a half foot waves, 16 and a half. And this one a little bit further, almost 20 foot waves are happening out here in the Atlantic Ocean. It is not a place to be putting a ship through. Any cruise ships in the area? Boy, I, I wouldn't want to be on that cruise ship uh, with 20 foot waves. That's some serious activity uh, going on there. If I click down here a little bit further away, look at this. Almost 15 foot waves, 14 and a half foot waves all the way out here, 14.9, so 15 foot waves. This is a very rough area of the ocean uh, and you do not want to be out in this uh, location. So that is the benefit. Uh, let me just quickly turn on uh, the NOAA operational 
um, data buoys to see what that looks like in the ocean observations too. So I'll turn on NOAA ocean uh, buoys. Should be a couple of more that show up here uh, in just a second. There we go. Whoop, they just popped off. Now they went back on again. So we have some additional uh, buoys here. And these we can see, well, no data for that one. That one needs to be fixed. Uh, there's one over here, and we can see the waves a little bit sporadic, probably because it was being tossed around by so much uh, wave action. But you can see uh, the, the wave height going up and down uh, over a period of time on this particular buoy, 44402. Uh, but there are other ones here as well. Water temperature, look at that. 58 degrees that is not going to fuel any tropical storm or tropical activity it is quite cold uh, in the atlantic here as it uh, usually is normally is no recent data from there so we got to get out there and fix some buoys but that's what's going on as far as uh, geoclabrate is concerned and the spinning systems uh, close to the u.s uh, the ones to the south again uh, no threat uh, to the United States. Here is uh, AL94, and this is AL95 that's showing some promise of developing and moving into uh, parts of Central America and the Yucatan Peninsula, uh, but then perhaps evolving again out over the Pacific. So uh, one other thing I'd like to do with GeoCollaborate, and I'm going to turn these data layers off. I'll turn off the buoys. I'll turn off um, uh, also the uh, satellite picture. Uh, the GOES satellite image. We'll turn that one off. Go up to here and turn that one off so we can have more of a base map. And also in the ocean observations, I'll turn off all of those uh, drifting uh, buoys because I want to show you some of the damage assessment data uh, that has been collected by the National Weather Service in Florida from Hurricane Milton. And remember, we had all those tornadoes. It was set a record for the number of tornado warnings that were issued by the National Weather Service Forecast Office. And so we are tied directly into uh, the damage assessment toolkit uh, that the National Weather Service uh, puts this into a database. So they go out and they look at the damage paths. They evaluate whether it's an EF1 through an EF5 or an EF0 uh, tornado. They look at the damage and they enter information about that uh, survey. And they put that information into their damage assessment toolkit, which is on an iPad or uh, on a tablet out in the field. And we can see these assessments pop up in real time in GeoCollaborate, and we can see the paths along which uh, these tornadoes uh, moved and the damage that has been reported as well. So take a look at this. Um, I'll back out just a little bit. There's some, there's some dots uh, popping up here. So this is a path of a tornado uh, west of uh, West Palm Beach. This is that tornado. I think there was quite a bit of video on this tornado as well. Uh, Wednesday, October 9th, the survey was done on October 11th. And you can see other types of information that's coded in there. But we can also dive down into neighborhoods. And you can see these points showing up in the neighborhoods. For example, this one right here. You can click on that and see what it, what it looks like and what the notes were. Uh, Palm Beach Gardens, uh, trees, hardwood, uprooted. EF scale right here, EF1. That's in this particular one right here. So we can just zoom right down into that neighborhood and see where that damage was. This is very helpful for uh, determining what kind of damage exists for potential restoration of power, whether uh, power lines were involved and they were knocked down and things like that. But uh, this one is from Milton. Some of these other ones are not from Milton. This one is from September 28th of 2022. So the way the Weather Service works currently with their damage assessment is that um, uh, they put it all into one database. So if we turn it on to look at it, we see them all. And there are a bunch of them across the United States. Uh, but these look like the ones that are going south to north are ones that happened in Hurricane Milton. And we can verify that by seeing the date. October 9th. Uh, just pretty amazing. So what I'd like to talk about as well, speaking of power outages, uh, is, is the latest report from the electric sector on the power outages in Florida. Look at this. Thank goodness we're down below 10,000 meters uh, that are still out of power. 9,438 
The other good news, workers are starting to head home. Remember, they mobilized more than 50,000 workers from 43 or more states, including the District of Columbia and Canada. Our friends from Canada sending a whole bunch of bucket trucks down to help with power restoration. And now we're below 10,000 in Florida. So a lot of crews finally, after 23 days on the road without a day off, wading through water and uh, through just god-awful conditions to restore power, uh, are able to now head home. Power has been restored to more than 3,365,071 meters just in Florida alone uh, because of the outages with Hurricane Milton. So uh, we're down below 10,000 and crews continue to work round the clock to restore power to those that are still without it. They're tough spots, really tough spots they have to get into uh, to restore that power. The other thing is, I just wanted to show you where we are in the hurricane name uh, for uh, this season. The names of the hurricanes were down to Nadine. So if AL95 is named before it makes landfall near Central America and the Southern Yucatan Peninsula, uh, Nadine would be the next name. Uh, and then we go to Oscar, Patty, Raphael, Sarah, Let's not even cover those names because we hope we have no more hurricanes uh, for the rest of this season. It's been an exhausting season for many, many people who have been involved in, uh, in those damaged paths and being impacted. And our uh, thoughts and prayers really go out to you. Many donations, many citizens have activated uh, to get food and water into areas, particularly in Western uh, North Carolina. So uh, that's it for this tropical update. I'm Dave Jones with Storm Center Communications and Geo Collaborate. That mid Atlantic storm, that's on its way out of here. That's great, but it is kicking up waves. We do have a lot of rip current uh, advisories out all along the East Coast. Uh, the water's cold enough anyway. Maybe you're not getting in the water, uh, but if you're going to be doing any surfing, rip currents are out there. Uh, this thing is really kicking up a lot of waves. So that's it for now. Uh, tomorrow we will have an update because we do have activity in the Atlantic uh, and in the Caribbean that we're watching. This has been an update for the Sensitive Information Sharing Environment All Hazards Consortium, where we share information across platforms from private sector liaisons within emergency operations centers uh, within states to the private sector, owner operators, electric utility vehicles, communication, food, fuel, medical supply, uh, pharma, transporting uh, uh, prescription medications across the country, delivering them so you can pick them up. So that's it. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Uh, in the meantime, hope you have a good rest of the day. Uh, enjoy your weekend coming up, hopefully. Please watch out for yourself and watch out for your neighbors.